The houses we build are way too big. We have to stop building so many large homes and we need to cut the size of our average home by 28%. That's according to the latest report from a construction body, and uh, they're suggesting that we should be stop. We should discourage the construction of detached homes. We should discourage the the construction of semi-detached homes, and instead we should build tens of thousands of terraced homes. Uh, why is that? Well, this is apparently the only way that we are going to achieve our climate goals as a country. And so I have a feeling this is going to be one of the more controversial episodes. And so without further ado, let's get into the show. You are listening to Behind the Facade and I'm your host, Gavin J. Gallagher. On this podcast, I explore the mental and emotional game often playing out subconsciously both in your mind and the mind of everyone else in the real estate or property investment market. The key to success in this game is to master your mindset and your behavior, to take control of your thoughts, your emotions, and most importantly, your ego. Welcome to the show. All right, guys, quick update before I get into the show. First of all, Mo, the Mo is coming along nicely and it's going to be your last chance, A, to see it and B, to contribute to my Movember fundraising campaign. As I mentioned uh, in the last episode or I'm not sure is it the previous episode, this is all being done for men's mental health and suicide prevention. So I'm putting a link down in the show notes below. Uh, or in the description below, and you can just find it there. And even just 5, 10 euro, anything would be really appreciated. Quick update as well. As of, I'm recording this on the 28th of November, so it's Monday, and I've just seen that BlockFi has filed for bankruptcy, Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And um, this is... I mean, first of all, we talked about FTX and the crypto collapse, and I did say that this is going to have this kind of knock-on impact. There is the first one, and we are going to see a lot more of this, in my opinion. And the really dangerous thing that I'm seeing is that these guys are putting out tweets and information into the market saying that your money is perfectly safe, don't need to withdraw your money. And less than 24 hours later, they are filing for bankruptcy. So literally, you're being assured that your money is safe, and then it's not safe. It's it's gone. And so if you have, if you're one of those people that is not listening to the news and you have money tied up in an exchange or any of those kind of um, crypto investments, I would be really, really careful and I would get my money out fast. All right. The next thing I want to ask you guys is for a little bit of feedback. It would be really, really appreciated. I'm trying to figure out a couple of things and it's about what kind of podcast or videos you'd like to see more of. The reason I'm asking is it's it's two or threefold because uh, in the past week or so, the video that I made, the, the video I posted on YouTube, which is of the podcast episode number 133, and that is on the fact that the housing uh, crisis is going to is about to get a lot worse is it 133 or i can't remember the number but i said that the why the housing crisis is about to get a lot worse and that i posted it to youtube and the video has kind of blown up actually it's getting about 10 times the number of views that my normal videos do and so i said i thank god is that a really popular topic that i need to make more of or is that something that you guys are kind of getting sick of hearing about? And so it's really just to get some feedback from you. Do you want to hear more about the housing crisis? Do you want to hear less about the housing crisis? And if that's the case, what do you want to hear more of? Would you like to see or hear from more guests? The guest interviews, I understand, were popular in the past. Or do you want to hear more of the kind of mindset stuff that I've covered in the past? Uh, the reason, another reason I asked that is that I was speaking to some people yesterday and they were asking me, uh, we were talking about my morning rituals and the kind of stuff that I do that allows me to kind of stay on top of the game, my game. And they were kind of saying, geez, Gavin, have you ever created content around this kind of stuff, like your morning routine and all of those kind of your rituals that you kind of deal with? Because he said, it is, is super interesting. And like, I think a lot of people would resonate with that. And I was thinking, is it super interesting? I mean, it's super interesting for me if I'm into it, and it's super interesting for my friend who I'm speaking to. 
But for you guys listening in, the multitude of people that come here for property investment, real estate investment advice, do you want to hear about productivity, um, morning rituals, how to kind of become or, or stay uh, a top performer, how to succeed and how to kind of stay at top of your game? Let me know. I would be really interested to hear your views. And uh, one of the reasons I'm asking this as well is just, you know, I like to keep things fresh. I like to keep the, um, the, 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 the content updated and I like to make sure that I'm talking about things that people want to hear. And um, part of me also thinks that all of this talk and all of this focus on the crash and recession and all of these things, there's maybe a little bit too much focus on this kind of negative content. And I, I do know that when you hear this kind of stuff, it's like it's one of the reasons that I don't read a lot of news is that it can have this negative impact on your mindset. And you could actually end up in a situation where you are thinking that everything is a doom and gloom. And so I should just bury my head in the sand and just wait for everything to get you know bubbly again. And then I'll come and start investing. Of course, by that stage, it's too late. You've kind of missed the opportunities that to buy at a low price. So do we want to protect our mindset or do we want to hear more of the negative news? And don't worry, we can protect our own mindset, Gavin. You just keep giving us the bad news. Let me know what you think. Right, so today's episode, the main topic is all about a headline that I read. in This afternoon, I was just going through today's newspaper. And I went, and the first, on the page one of the Irish Times, they're talking about Ireland is building way too many large houses. And that is according to the Irish Green Building Council. Now, if you're a regular listener, you'll know that I'm very much a supporter of sustainability and green initiatives. But I got to say, I felt a, a kind of a level of pushback that it's not that's not normal for me around this whole kind of sustainability and stuff. And that is because for me, I have got five kids. My household is seven people. And when you're in a house of that size, like being told that houses are way too big, that just like, ooh, are you, are you kidding me? Literally, have you tried to live in a house with seven people? It's, it feels like the walls are closing in on me all the time. And so uh, now my household size is definitely not normal. I've, according to the re- research here, they say that the average household in Ireland is 2.5 uh, people. And so I imagine the UK is probably very, very similar, if not less, because we probably have a higher birth rate here in Ireland than we do in the UK per head of population. So anyway, I'm going to be covering this report and what they are saying and why. And then I'm just going to give you some of my own perspectives coming from a large family and um, and just growing up, I've always lived, I've always had the privilege of living in quite a large house. And so I'm used to space. And maybe that's playing my mind. Maybe I've got it all wrong. And maybe you guys listening out there, maybe you're of the view that houses are perfectly fine in terms of size. Um, And so let me know if that happens to be the case. So the report is saying that house sizes need to be cut by 28%. And that construction of, in particular, detached homes is to be discouraged. And the rationale behind all of this is twofold. They say that if Ireland is to stand a chance to meet its uh, climate goals, then we need to you know, build an awful lot more houses on an awful lot less space or less land. And I think this is probably exactly goes uh, for the UK as well. Uh, they say that we have got in here in the Irish system, certainly if we're going to talk about local sort of news, they say that we have huge inefficiencies in the Irish planning system and that it has allowed for these oversized houses to become the norm. And it's in fact, I think it's like the planning guidelines suggest that we have to have minimum sizes uh, and things like that. And they're saying that if at the if we build at the current level of our densities, and the idea behind the housing strategy for, say, Ireland, for Dublin, is that we need to build 400,000 homes in Dublin, in the county Dublin area, uh, by 2030. So that effectively means that we have got seven years to build 400,000 homes. Do the math on that, by the way. Um, uh, and if we were to uh, do that with the current densities, that is going to cover an area of 349 square kilometers, which they say equates to about one third of the entire county covered in homes. And so they're saying that is, A, it's not 
it's not f realistic, it's not feasible, but B, it's going to mean that we are way, way out in terms of our climate goals and in terms of carbon emissions and things like that. Now, according to the report, they said the average new detached home is 244 square meters, which they say is about three times the size that is required for the average home. And they say that this is based on the average size of a household is now 2.5 persons per household. And they suggest that the space required per person is only 30 square meters. And that would mean that a 2.5 average household size would mean that you only need 75 square meters per average household. Now, I'm not sure, I mean, it's very simplistic to do that because if you think about it, like, first of all, there are, there's no such thing as a household of two and a half people. It's, you're either two people or you're three people and they're taking the average. So if you're a two person, then that's a 60 square meter would be the perfect size. But if you're a three person, then that's a 90 square meter and they're, they're finding a middle point. So I don't know if that math works. Uh, I mean, in terms of averaging, yes, of course, it makes a lot of difference. But in terms of practical, like designing houses, are you building a three-bedroom house that's 90 square meters or are you building a two-bedroom house that's 60 square meters? Because one way or another, you're, you're going to be too small for one or too big for the other. And so I don't know. Now, the house, like I've got five kids. Uh, you know, it's hard to go out there and find a house that has six bedrooms if you want each of your kids to have their own bedroom that is just you know that that doesn't happen basically the kids have to share bedrooms and things like that but if you wanted to i suppose your own your only option is to go out and build a, your own home buy a piece of land and build your own home to your own design but i don't know about you guys like what do you think do you think that like in my opinion space is always a problem and even if my, like, okay, my family is three times the size of an average household, but I do f find that even if I had, like, just one uh, kid living in the house, that the house is too small, even at that rate. And, like, do people want comfort? I think they do. Do people want to have uh, space to swing a cat? You know, the old saying. And I, when I lived in London, um, I lived in London for about a year and a half and when I was there myself and my wife my wife now but at the time we weren't married and we didn't have any kids at the time and we were living there uh, on Winchester Street which is near Victoria Station so right in the middle of the city which was great but it was a very small place and uh, we had an extra bedroom in case we had people coming over to stay so it would be nice to be able to like, put you know put somebody up for the night but most of the time it was just the two of us living and it was great to have that but we still had to go and hire a lockup down at the end of our street there was a garage there was like a parking garage and they had a lockup area and you could go down you could hire a place and pay so much a month to keep your stuff and so we would keep you know boxes of clothes and boxes of you know your your suitcases if you're traveling you don't want to have them cluttering up the house so this was quite normal um, but you still needed storage space in a, an apartment or in, a, in, a, in this case, we were on the ground floor of a house and we needed a lockup just to make the place more comfortable because there wasn't enough storage space. So I find it hard to believe that the average family out there is going to say, yeah, it's perfectly, we, we would manage in smaller homes. I would think that if anything, you would look for a home with either more storage space or certainly that there would be subsidized storage along the M50 or along the in the industrial centers because it is not cheap to go and take storage. I was calculating recently, I had a lockup um, in, in one of the industrial areas here in Dublin on the M50 and it was in Ballymount and I was paying every year, I was paying 3,000 a year to keep this space in this lockup. And I can remember like the stuff just sits there gathering dust and occasionally maybe three or four times a year you go and collect the stuff and take it and swap it around or whatever but I can remember calculating after 10 years of having this lockup I was saying that is 30,000 euro I have spent on a space that is just full of boxes that's just junk basically and that what, what could you do with 30 grand I mean it, it just makes you think now getting back to the IGBC report they are saying that the reason behind all of this, the other rational, um, the, the reason for their report is that 
embodied carbon is the the big issue and uh, that is something I've talked about before in here. Embodied carbons is is one of the big, big issues coming uh, towards us in terms of the construction sector and architects designing and even looking at refurbishing office buildings as, as I am here in East Point at the moment. You're looking at refurbishing an office building. Embodied carbon very much comes into the into question. And w is it more efficient for you to demolish a building and build a new building or is it you know, is it immoral of you to demolish a building that all of the concrete and everything that's there, there was a lot of carbon went into constructing this. And should you not simply be reutilizing or repurposing that existing structure? And that's what a lot of people are doing. The problem is, is that some of the, the densities now have gone up. So we have three story buildings here that could, you know, would be, you would get a, a planning permission straight away for seven or eight stories. So but you're not gonna be able to build seven or eight stories off an existing footprint. So the only option is to demolish the building. But people are suggesting that you shouldn't do that because of embodied carbon. Anyway, it is a, an interesting topic to kind of de dwell into, to delve into. And, you know, embodied carbon, it's an issue that's very, very difficult to, to get to the bottom of. They are suggesting that terraced houses are the most efficient type of uh, house building and that semi-detached or detached houses they have a lot of external walls and that's where heat escapes and so the fewer outside walls you have the more efficient your property is going to be which is why terraced houses you have a house on one side you have a house on the other so mid-terraced houses suffer no heat loss through the sides obviously the front of the house and the rear of the house they'll lose a certain amount of heat through that and certainly I can vouch for that that is most definitely true in all of the different houses I've lived in over the years you just know that the central rooms, the room, the bedrooms that are in the middle of the house that don't have very many external walls, they are always much, much warmer. And I know uh, even the house that I live in at the moment, my daughter lives in an outside room and it's always cold, uh, whereas the rest of the house could be quite warm. And so that does make a difference. Obviously, insulation standards make a big, big difference, but the end wall is always the, the, the problem. And um, when you get into apartment buildings, Apartments that are mid-level are much, much more efficient as well in terms of carbon. Now, carbon in an apartment building is better than terraced houses, but mid-level is the best because they don't have any heat escaping through the floor and they don't have any heat escaping through the ceiling. And that is because you've got an apartment above that's heated and you have an apartment below that's heated. Whereas if you're in the ground floor, then heat is going down through the, f through the floor into the ground and vice versa in, on, the, on the penthouse, you've got a big roof that has to be well insulated. And even when it's insulated, it loses a certain amount of heat. So apartments, mid-level, and um, the worst offenders by far, according to the report, are detached bungalows. And that is because they have a huge amount of external surface. And so they are effectively like building a penthouse apartment on the ground. You've got the, the, the heat escaping through the ground, the heat escaping through the roof, and you've got four walls that are, you know, it's a detached house, so all four walls are external. And so those are the biggest culprits in terms of carbon emissions. Uh, interesting terraced houses come second to mid-floor apartments and that is down to the fact that when you're in the mid-floor you don't have the the problem of the the ground floor or the roof uh, being the heat loss source now i'm curious about this particular report they did not get into the method of construction and certainly i don't think you can just make a generalist kind of rule like this because if you're building apartment a big apartment building will say that is built with a lot of concrete for concrete, you know, lift cores and stair cores and all that, that there is an awful lot more carbon that has gone into constructing that than you have if you were building, say, terraced homes that are built with timber frame construction. Because timber frame construction would have an awful lot less concrete in its use, and therefore I would have thought that that is a much more efficient in terms of construction method anyway. Anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts on this because this to me is uh, really controversial because, you know, uh, we all want to do better in terms of green and stuff, but do we want smaller houses? Personally, I cannot see myself ever downsizing. Perhaps when the kids are all grown up, yes, but certainly not. And I have a place in Spain and it's very, very generous, like a 
like a nice big villa and I always I'm actually envious that I can't live there all year round because it's 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 much bigger than the homes that we have here in Ireland and so I'd love to hear your view leave a comment down below or send me something through social media just let me know do you think houses are too big uh, you know are your are the houses in your area whether you live in Ireland or the UK or wherever you're listening in from what are the house sizes like are they too big are they too small what do you think do you long for a smaller home or do you long for a larger home? And uh, I know where I stand. You know where I stand. I'm going to be moving into a brand new detached home very soon. So I'm definitely one of the guilty parties. But again, I have a big family. It's about three times the size of the average household, according to this report. And so for me, I am personally happy to pay for like it's a highly it's going to be a very very highly efficient energy rated house it's going to be a rated and so like i'll pay for that and i'm prepared to do that that's my bit that i'm doing but love to know your views on this all right guys let me know your thoughts and i will see you in the next one Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Behind the Facade. If you found this episode useful, please leave a review over on iTunes or indeed share it with a friend. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or if you'd like to ask for a, com a topic to be covered, please leave a comment in the uh, notes below or the description below or indeed you can connect with me through my Facebook group and that is called Behind the Facade Community. Alternatively, Social media is where you'll find me, Gavin J. Gallagher, for all my social media stuff. And I also have a website by the same name, GavinJGallagher.com. And if you go in there, make sure you sign up for the weekly newsletter. That's the email list you just put in, join, join my tribe. And when you're in there, you get a weekly uh, newsletter from myself. And it, there's no spam in there. It's just I post the latest podcast, the latest blog post, the latest video and the latest live stream. And so just keep you up to date on all of the content I'm putting out. All right, guys, talk to you all next week.